a beautiful morning, an amazing campsite with some awesome scenery, the perfect temperature, some good friends, and a week ahead of us where we're gonna go hit a whole lot of miles out on the dirt, exploring some trails, finding some good campsites, and eating some good food. This is gonna be a great week, and we're gonna bring you along for the adventure. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and what an amazing morning it is here. We are at an awesome campsite of a few miles south of downtown Moab and just really enjoying the morning here. Now, we got here late last night, but totally worth it because we are getting ready to set off on a week-long adventure where we are gonna do as many miles on the dirt as possible, and we're gonna take you along. This should be awesome. We're gonna be doing the Rim Rocker Trail, which is a trail that I've recently learned about, and I'm like, I gotta go check that out. It is a trail that goes from Utah to Colorado. It's 160 miles. There should be some great scenic views along the way, some historical stops, and hopefully we'll find some great campsites. And of course, we're gonna be cooking up some good chow because we're gonna eat well on this trip. Everybody's got something planned on the menu. Even I'm gonna cook, so this should be a lot of fun. And then I've pieced together a couple other trails that when we get to the end of the Rim Rocker that should help extend our time on the dirt with just small little segments of payment. So this should be a lot of fun. The goal is to spend as much time on dirt as possible. And then when we complete that, we'll spend a couple days in Colorado just going and enjoying some of the most commonly known trails out there, just having a good time. I'm super excited to be out here with my good friends. The weather is perfect. This is the best time of year to be out here. We're gonna have a great time, and I'm so glad that you guys are joining us. Now, we're gonna go wrap up camp here. I'll show you all the vehicles that are with us, and then there's a lot of new camping gear, so I'll definitely share some of the new gear that we're using. We'll see how it goes. I mean, some stuff we try, some stuff we don't. Sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't. That's just how it is. All right, uh, I'm gonna finish my cup of coffee, pack up, and then we're gonna hit the trail, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Now, while this was a beautiful campsite, the temperature today was gonna be around 97 degrees. So we didn't waste any time packing up our gear so we could head for higher elevations and cooler weather. On this trip, we have a convoy of five vehicles. Of course, my best friend Marco is joining us with a new look to his Jeep and he is now pulling the Patriot Campers X2 trailer. My good buddy Josh is in his Jeep Gladiator that is slowly turning into a beast of an adventure vehicle. Marco's daughter Paula and her boyfriend David are here with us with their two four-month-old dogs, Anza and Sedona. They're along for the trip. And our good friend Alan will be joining us for the first leg of this adventure. I've got the Jeep Gladiator this time and I'm trying out a new tent, but more on that later. The Rim Rocker Trail wasn't far from where we were camping, so we took the time now to air down. And while most of the terrain will be easy to moderate, airing down will make for a much more comfortable ride along our 160 plus mile trek. And Marco even aired down the tires on the trailer to keep some of the trail vibrations to all his food and gear inside to a minimum. I always enjoy coming to Moab to wheel and explore, and there are a lot of designated and primitive campsites available in the area, but in the summertime, it's better to head for the hills and avoid the sizzling heat, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now, we did cheat just a little bit because the official start of the Rim Rocker Trail begins closer to town and takes you just behind some residential and business areas. So we jumped on the trail right off of Highway 191 across from behind the Rocks Road. The Rim Rocker Trail is a scenic route that you can travel either west to east or east to west, and we opted to run it from Utah and end up in Montrose, Colorado. The trail takes you across a variety of terrains, many elevation changes, and beautiful scenic views that change frequently. We planned to run the trail in two days, but I think we all agreed when we finished that doing it in three days would definitely be more relaxing. There are primitive campsites along the trail, but be sure to know the rules in each area. There are some private and public lands that the Rim Rocker runs along, so it's important to know what type of land you are in before pulling over for the night. Okay, now time to go find our first campsite.
So we're a couple hours in now and really enjoying this trail. I mean, this is really cool. We started down in Moab where it's just all the red rock area. And now we're up in the mountains and the forest. We're at 7,600 feet already. It's cooled off significantly. It's like 99 degrees in Moab. It's 85 degrees up here and we're still climbing, which means it's gonna get cooler. Hopefully we can find a nice camp spot up at elevation. Uh, but it's been a really nice trail. I mean, the scenery is awesome. Nothing crazy hard. Uh, definitely, you know, you need a little bit of clearance and four wheel drives good, especially in these rocky sections, uh, but nothing that a stock four by four couldn't make. This is a great trail. I think you guys should come check it out. I'm excited to see what's to come. We still have a long ways to go. All right guys, so we've been on the trail for a while. We just decided to pull off the side for lunch and what an amazing spot. Look at this view of the mountains here and then the view of the valley down there. Unbelievable. Marco, is this an okay spot for lunch? It's amazing, amazing. it's beautiful over How's here. the trail been so far? It's super fun. Dude, I love it. It's, it's an awesome trail, I love it. I'm ready for some lunch. Lunch was very simple, just some sandwiches and a few snacks. It was nice to get out and stretch our legs and enjoy the scenery and just talk for a little bit, but we couldn't stay long. We have to put in some miles in order to complete this trail in two days. The first section of this trail was rocky and it really kept our pace to a minimum, a little slower than we anticipated. So the goal was to put in around 64 miles today and to find a camp spot that I kind of had already pre-marked. And then we will make up for it tomorrow since from the research I've done, the terrain should be a little smoother on the second leg and allow us to pick up the pace a little bit. All right, gotta keep this convoy moving.
All right guys, so we've reached camp, but this isn't the camp that I actually had planned for us to stay tonight. We saw this coming uh, down the trail and we paused for a minute just to take a look. And I think we're all so glad we did. Look at this amazing view. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Yeah, this is the view of the place we're camping tonight and we cannot complain. Now the other campsite is like a thousand feet down at elevation and it was all supposed to, supposed to be on a ridge, maybe over there somewhere, but I think, I think we picked right. So it's gonna be a good night at camp. Finding dispersed campsites is usually not that big of a challenge as long as you do a little bit of homework before you leave on your trip. But it can sometimes be hit or miss on just how nice the campsite locations are. Making sure you stop along the way can sometimes pay huge dividends. This site was several hundred yards off the trail, and if I had not decided to take a quick look, we would have ran right past it. It is a little earlier in the trip than I anticipated stopping, so we'll have to make up for it tomorrow. All right, everybody's getting settled in and uh, dinner will start soon. I'm really excited about that, but man, this view is awesome. I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've got a couple new pieces of gear that I'm testing out for the first time. And uh, up front, not sponsored, I purchased all of these. Uh, these were not given to me. I'm not paid to talk about these. Uh, the first one is this Life Saver water can. And I was very intrigued about this because one, it's a 4.8 gallon, so it holds a little bit more water than the water port that I've been using. And it also has a pressurized pump on it, which makes that nice. But also inside here, it's got a water filter. So it, you can put, you know, lake water or river water in there and it's gonna filter that out and your water's gonna come out perfectly clean. So I've only used it for one day yesterday and so far I like it. It does have a little hose attachment, which makes things nice, but really just being able to wash my hands with that little bit of pressure and brush my teeth, really nice. And I do like that it's 4.8 gallons. So it's a little pricey. I think it was just under 300 bucks. Um, so that may not be for everybody. The other one is, if you watched the last video I did where I was solo camping, I tried out a swag for the first time, and I gotta tell you, I love the swag. It was comfortable, it was warm, it kept me dry in all that rain. The only concern I had with it is it's really small. Like, changing your clothes in there is tough. If you wanna get the baby wipes out and do a little bath in there, it's tough. Uh, it's perfect for, you know, running and gunning. You gotta just throw it down on the ground, you gotta go to bed, it's perfect, but if you want a little more room, to kind of have some gear in there, change your clothes, I think a tent, a ground tent is the way to go. And so I'm trying out a Shift Pod Mini and uh, these things are really nice. I slept in one of these, the larger version of it, uh, a few months ago and I really was very impressed with it so I wanted to try it out. So uh, until I get things back to rooftop tent status, I'm enjoying sleeping on the ground and kind of going a little bit old school. So I'm trying this tent out. So let me set this up and show you what it looks like. It's a little space age looking, it's kind of cool. And just like that, the tent's up and running. That was really fast. And this morning when I broke it down, when we were down in Moab, it broke down really fast as well. I like it. It's very well built. Lots of room in there. More room than you would think. I'm enjoying it. Pretty nice little tent. What's doing with that fish, buddy? Ceviche. Ah, like the ceviche we had in Baja? In Baja. Oh. But now this is ceviche in Colorado. Ceviche in Colorado. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with Colorado, but it's good. Oh, I can't wait. This is for lunch tomorrow. For lunch tomorrow. Right, awesome. It'll be cooking in good. lemon all night long. Yeah. It's gonna be super good tomorrow. Nice. Well, buddy, I gotta tell you, I'm missing the trailer a little bit, but I'm glad that you have it. What do you think of it so far? I love it. You're not getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> I got something else in the works, though. I know. I know. <laughs> no, I don't think I can go back without a trailer. It's pretty nice. I mean, all the, the table tops that I have yeah. to work and, yeah. and everything is in here. My Jeep is lighter. Yeah. I, I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, you know, I think a trailer like this isn't, isn't practical for most people. But for people like us that spend, you know, multiple days all year long out on the trail yeah. doing trips like this over and over, I think it's just really nice to have. If you're gonna go out and camp, you know, a couple weekends a year, it's probably not a good investment for you. But I think if you're doing what we're doing, or you're yeah. just going out and going out and going out, Absolutely. it's perfect. This makes the perfect kitchen too. Yeah. How about this view? 
can't get better than this. It's incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, it's I definitely thought. up there with the top campsites we've been at. It's just Absolutely. pretty awesome. Okay, so one other thing that we've got to talk about. Because I've been getting messages from a lot of people over the last few months being like, where's Marco? Are you guys not friends anymore? What happened? So you've had a lot of family stuff going on. You haven't been able to go out in a while, right? Absolutely. So now this is the first time you've been out in a long time. Yes. And you've been you've been texting me, calling me. Dude, we got to go. I can't wait. We got to go. Yeah, yeah. And it's so good to be back out here, dude. We are buddies. We're always good to be buddies. I enjoy watching Marco pull all the ingredients out of his fridge at camp and then wield them all together in a savory, delicious dish. The flavors that he is able to put together at camp never ceases to amaze me. This ceviche, well, let's just say it tasted better than any I've ever had at a restaurant, and that is not an overstatement. But Marco's ceviche was not dinner. Alan actually had dinner duty tonight. All right, everyone, Alan has agreed to cook dinner for the first night, and buddy, what is on the menu? So we got pork tacos with uh, an assortment of seasoning. We've got uh, chili powder, granulated garlic, uh, cumin, and tomatoes and onions. Okay. And we're gonna put those on these tacos that will just heat up on the tembo tusk. Oh, that smells good. And then uh, what we're gonna do is grill up some steaks. Marco doesn't eat pork, so we'll do a New York strip steak and then the ribeye steak on the tembo tusk. Just sear them, get them crispy, and then we'll probably pair it with uh, Marco's chimichurri sauce tonight. Awesome, man. Well, that's gonna be some good. Some beer and wine, you know, and it's a party. Well, thank you, buddy, for making dinner tonight. No worries, man. My pleasure. All right, here it goes. It smells so good. Mmm. Oh, Alan. Delicious. Sweet tomatoes. Very good. Cumin, chili powder, the onions, you know. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Thank you very much. No worries, anytime. Mark, are you roughing it tonight? Oh my God. I'm having the best time of my life, man, right now. Marco, I love that it's not your night to cook and you're still cooking. <laughs> it's like when we hear sizzle, smell it, and we, we're eating. I love we it. just want to keep, like, it. his snacking. You know you're snacking, the Paula said. It's like we have to keep... You like that? Good stuff. Yes, we know. We are campers with an eating problem, but you know what? We're okay with that. All this delicious food just boosts the spirits at the end of a long day like this. As the sun began to set, we heard a little thunder and watched some rain off in the distance. Fingers crossed we don't get wet tonight. What a beautiful morning. The weather is perfect. The sunrise this morning was off the charts. And now the smell of breakfast this morning is just uh, perfect. And of course, got some coffee. Um, the campsite is amazing, epic, absolutely awesome. I'm so glad we stopped here to check this out because this was not the original site, but we will check out the one we were gonna stay at and see if we made the right decision. I can't imagine that that one's any nicer than this one. Now we have, well over 100 miles that we've got to put in on dirt today. So today's gonna to be a long drive. So filming's gonna be a little shorter than yesterday. Uh, yesterday was tough because there were some sections where it was pretty rocky and we could only do about five miles an hour. So it was a little slow going. Uh, it wasn't until towards the end of the day where we were finally able to pick up the pace. I'm hoping today that most of the trail is pretty easy. And then we'll head into Montrose, Colorado. We gotta resupply with some water, grab a couple things and 
we're gonna have maybe Marco's hand checked out. So he was working in the garage the weekend before we came out here. He cut his hand pretty good. He probably should have gone and got sutures, but I've already gave him a hard time about that. But now his hand is swollen, looks like a little infection. We've cleaned it out, put some antibiotic ointment on there. We're gonna keep a close eye on it. But having an infection uh, when you're out on a multi-day trip like this is not a good thing. So we may have to stop by the clinic and get him some antibiotics. We'll see how it goes. We'll keep an eye on his hand. Um, so we've got a lot going on today. Today's going to be a long day on the trail, but I know where we're camping uh, the next spot because it's really pretty. So I'm excited to, uh, to go check that out. And then Marco's going to be cooking dinner tonight. Maybe. Maybe I might have to cook if he, uh, if he can't cook with that hand. Maybe I'll have to take over cooking duty. What is it about mountain fresh air and the aroma of a hot breakfast being cooked up at camp that is so soothing to the soul? Breakfast and coffee always just seem to taste better at camp, at least they do for me. While we do have a lot of miles to put in today, we were not in a rush this morning because while it's important to stay on schedule, and I'm a stickler about that, I think it's more important to enjoy the moments first. And this campsite, all we wanted to do was just savor it just a little bit longer before packing up. Now we are just over 100 miles from the end of the Rim Rocker and the research I did suggested that we should be able to make up some pretty good time today. Hopefully we can reach camp before nightfall with a few stops along the way. Let's go see what this next section of trail has in store for us. All right, so we mentioned that there was another campsite that we had marked on this route called the Epic Campsite, and this is it. And while it's pretty nice and the view over there isn't bad, there is no way we would have fit all five vehicles in here. So I think we made the right call. But if you have only two or three vehicles, it is pretty nice. It is pretty epic. been following my adventures for a while you'll know I'm not especially fond of narrow shelf roads and while this one was narrow and there was some steep 
cliffs on the side. It wasn't that bad. And thankfully, the views all around took my mind off it. Plus, there was this biscuit rock we just couldn't stop staring at on the way down. It looks like aliens built this thing. It's very, very cool. Now, as we approached the bottom, the Dolores River came into view and there is a small bridge we had to cross over and then we had to get on the pavement for about half a mile through the canyon, which is very scenic still, before finally turning off onto the dirt again and climbing in elevation. The terrain changes of this trail is something I am really enjoying. Unfortunately, we have not been making very good time today. We still have about 85 miles to go. I'm really hoping the pace is able to pick up here soon. Lunch is also closing in, so we've got to look for a place to stop for a quick bite to eat so we can keep on moving, but we've got a long ways to go. But I am really enjoying this trail so far. So it's just about one o'clock in the afternoon and we left about 9.30 this morning, a little later than we wanted to leave, but we've been making pretty good time the last couple hours and I've only been doing a little bit of filming. We can't film the entire 100 miles, so we're gonna film when we can, but as the leader of the team, I've gotta make sure that we're making the time and distance, so we're trying to balance both, filming and showing you guys and making sure we get to the end of the trail today. So we've stopped, we're gonna have lunch. That ceviche that Marco made yesterday, I cannot wait to dig into that. Uh, we're gonna just get in here quick and then we're gonna head out we got still a long ways to go but man the scenery the terrain it's been awesome i love this trail marco has a ceviche looking buddy it's gonna be awesome oh dude look at that it's been, been marinating. marinating for 24 hours yeah that's awesome man how's the hand buddy better okay well we're gonna take a good look at that when we get to montrose absolutely man it smells so good yeah it does you want to talk about a refreshing lunch to have when that sun is beating down on you out in the desert? Boy, ceviche mm. is the way to go. No and I have to say, without no. doubt, no. this no. was the best ceviche no. I've ever had. Marco, once again, knocked it out of the park. We put a big dent in that Ziploc bag and we ate a whole lot of it. Unfortunately, this had to be a quick stop. We needed to get back on the trail. After lunch, we hit it hard, and we finally found ourselves on some open dirt road, and we were able to pick up the speed a little bit, and the miles began to tick away. It seems like we might make it to camp now before nightfall. Plus, we were just now reaching the nine mile section of the Rim Rocker that is paved and takes you through some backcountry farm roads. And sure, it would be great if the entire trail was in the dirt, but at least it's able to connect all this amazing trail together. Now, there is a small town here and there is a gas station if you need it, but we were carrying extra fuel and we think we're gonna be okay. Once back on the dirt, the pace was still steady, but there were some thunderclouds in the distance that now we were keeping our eye on.
All right, everyone. So one thing we were paying attention to on this trip is how many miles we were going to be doing off road. And we all made sure we brought extra fuel. And because Marco is pulling the trailer, his Jeep's working a little harder. So he's the first one to hit the e light. Yep. So we're going to throw a little fuel in it just to be safe. We've still got about 25 miles to go, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else will need fuel. We'll see. Well, we just completed the Rim Rocker Trail, and what an awesome trail. That's 160 miles we did in two days, and as far as long distance overland trails go, I have to say this might be, this might be my new favorite. I mean, I got a, a special place in my heart for the Mojave Trail, but this was amazing. The scenery changes the entire way, the terrain changes, the epic camp spots that are potentially there. I think you guys should definitely go check out this trail. It is awesome. Now, we are going to head into town, uh, fuel up in Montrose, and then we're going to continue uh, on another trail because we're not done. We're going to keep on going and hitting as many dirt roads, as many dirt trails as we can, working our way into Colorado. So we've got a couple more days on the dirt. This should be a whole lot of fun. we got to go get some fuel. While we were stopped, I did take another close look at Marco's hand and it was looking better. So we'll continue to keep it clean, covered, and a close eye on it for any signs of worsening infection. We then headed into the town of Montrose, topped off our fuel tanks, grabbed a little bit of extra water, and then it was just a short drive to our next section of dirt. Okay, so we just left Montrose after fueling up and we took a look at Marco's hand and bandaged it up, cleaned it up. It looks much better. Is it feeling better, buddy? Absolutely, man. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, we're going to keep a close eye on that the rest of the trip for sure to make sure that infection does not spread. Now, we are at the trailhead of the Dave Wood Trail, which is about 40 miles long and it's a really good connecting trail because it's only about six miles off of the Rim Rocker, so we get to keep going on dirt. Now, the first few miles of this is just pretty much a graded dirt road and I've already scouted of this trail and found a good camp spot so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna head straight to camp and then we'll turn the camera back on and we'll see you there We did finally make it to our campsite before the sun went down. This was a nice thick forested area, very quiet, and it wasn't long before the overland cook began to work his magic. Okay, okay buddy, so I saw you cleaning some fish back there. You changed the menu. Yes. What's for dinner tonight? Cod with chipotle sauce and salad okay that sounds good now we you and i were gonna make some salsa together yeah but i was thinking um since it's fish i want to cook that first okay and then the meat after okay so it'll last a little longer all right so i get to help you with the salsa tomorrow you're helping me with the salsa and with the carne con chile colorado the day after Heck yeah dude i'm ready man and you know i'm cooking for you on this trip too i got yes. a, i got a special vegetarian chili that i'm gonna make for you I can't man. wait man well, I'm excited, dude. I think this fish is going to be awesome. That ceviche, though, oh, that was the bomb. I enjoy watching Marco cook, and I love seeing him inspire other people to help out. Josh and Alan were both helping out with dinner tonight. You know, Marco's motto is, it's super easy to make. And honestly, after watching him all these years, it really is simple. But you do need to prepare. you got to bring the right ingredients, and then you got to take the time. It's easy to boil water and throw it in a dehydrated mountain meal, but I promise you it's not going to taste as good. And I have never been passionate about the aroma of a mountain meal. But Marco, his food always, it's so savory, it's so delicious, it's, it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this through the camera. I love his meals and I love his passion for it. Okay, so this is the pot. Follow me, guys. The salsa you made? Chipotle sauce. Now, now to the other station, to the salad station.
lettuce, camp made dressing. Camp made dressing, not yeah. homemade. Not homemade, camp made. <laughs> good, <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's so good. That sauce is amazing. I heard I heard a mmm back there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying it here myself. Right, I'm not leaving tomorrow. <laughs> We don't want you to leave. Oh my gosh. Marco, that sauce is out of control. Yeah, it's super good. Okay, <clears throat> let me tell you this, guys. I love fish. But when it comes to cod, I'm like, eh, it's okay. It's into, I'm, you know, I get it once in a while. This is, Marco, you never cease to amaze me, buddy. I love it. Delicious. All right, so I'm having a little bit of a challenge with my refrigerator and my power system. I thought, you know what, let me just turn the camera on and share it with you. So normally when I bring the refrigerator, I don't run a dual battery system. And I've talked a little bit in the past, like I just don't like the weight and the complexity of it. So what I have is I have my goal zero down here. And what I do is I plug that in to the Jeep and then the fridge goes directly into the goal zero. That way when I'm driving, the Jeep is charging the goal zero. And then when I stop, the fridge is running off the goal zero. It works out really well, except when the connector comes out and you drive all day and the goal zero doesn't charge. And so that's what happened yesterday. And so this morning when I woke up, the battery was dead. Thankfully, the fridge still held its temperature just fine. Uh, but driving today with a completely dead battery, keeping the fridge going, plus charging a couple cameras for this trip, it's down to about 40%. And we have a whole lot of clouds in the sky, so solar's not doing me any good right now. So. I'm struggling a little bit with uh, with power management. I think either I need a bigger battery or I gotta figure out another solution because I don't think this is the right one. Thankfully, my fridge had been staying in a safe temperature range because for the last few days, I had been hiding away a special dessert in here. Normally, I only bring this when we're doing our hot desert trips, but I thought on a multi-day trip like this, it would be a nice treat to break out in the middle of the trip. What a great end to a great day. I can't wait to see what lays ahead still. Well, good morning. It is uh, a nice, brisk morning up here in the mountains of Colorado. And even in August, it still gets chilly up here. So if you're gonna come up here, make sure you bring some warm cloves. I've got my coffee and I've already started making breakfast for the crew. We got some blueberry pancakes uh, on the griddle here. Yeah, it smells so good, guys. It's awesome. Uh, we're going to pack up camp here after breakfast and continue down the rest of this trail. And then we've got to say goodbye to Alan. He's got to actually head back home. So we're going to miss him for the rest of the trip. But then we're going to keep on trucking down. We've got another 58 miles of dirt trail to go before we start heading in deeper into Colorado. The dogs are lively this morning and having a good time, but uh, it's a great morning. It's so beautiful out here. He's done. Huh? Are you two done? Oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, ladies. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. Pancakes are always better at camp. With coffee? Yeah. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you for breakfast. It's been great having Alan on this trip, but unfortunately because of his busy schedule, he was only able to join us for the first couple days and we had to say goodbye to him today. He'll be missed for the rest of the trip, but I know that he will be back here because I saw him smiling and grinning ear to ear the entire trip. I know he wants to come back here and explore. Okay, I'm excited to see what still lays ahead. We've still got more to see, guys.
All right, so we are at the end of the Dave Wood Trail, and what a beautiful scenic trail. Now, look, you could probably do this entire thing in two-wheel drive, but what a great place to come and escape. There were some awesome campsites along the way. So if you're out in this area and you're looking for an easy trail and some beautiful campsites, I think it's worth coming to. Now, we're gonna hit the road here, head out, and we're gonna be looking for the trailhead to the Dolores to Norwood, and then we're gonna cruise on down that one, and it's about a little over 50 miles. So we're gonna put in some more miles. I think it's gonna be some more nice easy scenic road but I don't exactly know we'll find out when we get there this should be fun let's go the drive from the Dave Wood Trail to the Dolores to Norwood was just a few miles along a nice easy country back road again no interstates around here the Dolores to Norwood Trail is an easy graded dirt road but the scenery well let's just say we stopped more than once to take some pictures because it was beautiful around every turn. This is the right time of year to be up here. Well, after about 45 miles in, we ended up hitting pavement. And so what we did was we saw a really cool dirt road and we said, you know what, let's just go turn off there. Maybe there's some place for lunch because it's lunchtime. And so we came in about a half mile. I have no idea what this trail is, but it took us to this beautiful little shaded area. There's a big cliff and a river down there and we're gonna stop and have lunch. So this is gonna be perfect. Okay, now it has been an amazing last couple days, starting from the Rim Rocker all the way here to lunch. And this is where I'm gonna end the video. Now we have a couple more days where we're gonna spend in Colorado and then we're gonna go to Arizona and then we're gonna head home. But this is the end of this adventure. Thanks for watching.